Hi there, welcome to the studio. My name is Matthew Palmer, and today on this watercolor work, I want to paint in this lovely sunset vignette with a boat reflecting. This is going to be a beautiful, quick mini sunset scene. Let's get started. Let's take a look at what we've got materials wise. So, we've got the normal palette of colors here, <clears throat> and this is the entire range of 14 colors we've got in the palette. You don't need all of those colors, you could do this workshop this tutorial with just three colours. You could use natural blue, natural red, natural yellow light. But I want to use various colours throughout. Colours I will be using will be the likes of natural orange, natural yellow light, natural red, natural violet, natural grey. They're going to be the main colours for this one. We've got a small round coin with a folded up piece of kitchen paper and we're going to wrap this around. Um, so it's a double sheet of paper if you like. We're going to wrap that around, smooth that in little little blobs in it and that's going to be good for stamping out the sun and pop that to one side. Spare kitchen paper, plenty of water. As far as brushes are concerned I'm going to be using um, a size 10 round brush or a medium super point, a size 6 super point and I've got my sky and cloud brushes here as well which will make the process nice and easy as well. If you haven't got those brushes uh, you can just use uh, normal ones, but this makes painting skies beautiful. This this wonderful sort of shape, this fan shape here, which is really nice for doing a sky. But if you've got those, use them, enjoy them. We'll start off by cleaning that brush really well. Um, I'm just sort of in the water pot here, which is just off camera. And what I want to do is I'm going to use this brush on this sheet of paper. Now the paper I'm using here is just a small size sheet of paper. It's about one eighth imperial. A5 ish is the size. So you're looking at sort of 11 inch by about 7 inch, give or take, something like that. The Sky and Cloud brush is good for putting the water on. You can use it sideways with the writing facing up, that'll give you a good coverage. And you can even do this as a vignette with a faded edge, or you can fill the page, it's up to you. This will be a nice little tutorial to enjoy. So a couple of coats of water is advisable. Make sure it's nicely covered. You can see the light reflecting off that paper there. Beautiful. Make sure there's no dry bits. Mm -hmm. Couple of coats is, is where you want to be. Now, when it comes to putting the paint on, my advice to you is don't put too much uh, water on the brush. Mm -hmm. Kind of get in the habit of doing that a couple of times because the water's on the page. Look at that beautiful shape, that sort of dagger shape. Beautiful brush. We're going to go straight in. Uh, with some natural orange, nice and strong for the colours, don't be afraid of that. If you haven't got a sky and cloud brush, use a size 10 brush for this. But this lovely shape really makes painting clouds nice and easy. What we're going to do here is just work in the centre and, and get a bit of a wash. Look how it fills the area nice and quick. Horizontal lines at the bottom. Get a bit more orange coming through here. Sweep it across, beautiful colour vibrancy as always. Back to the palette, we'll clean the brush really well, wipe it off on the side. I just want to bring in a little bit of light yellow, not too much um, light yellow but a little bit would be good. You can pretty much use these colours nice and strong for doing sunsets. Now one of the advantages, advantages of a sky and cloud brush is you can use it wide or thin. So if you look at the brush like this you can see it's, it's very pointy use it that way it's nice and wide so it kind of ticks a few boxes and for a sunset that's good because I can use this sort of thin blade edge here for whizzing across and mixing this vibrant yellow nice and strong for the yellow get some horizontals at the bottom and get this lovely so the yellows and the oranges mix beautifully together you can see them there love that color now at the top we need to go a bit darker. So let's get back to the palette, clean the brush again, get into the habit of making sure it's nice and clean, wiping away, squeeze out that excess water. That's always a good thing to do here. Having the tissue on standby is quite good as well. Here we've got some natural violet. I'm gonna take some of this on the brush, like so. So it's I've sort of loaded up both sides of the brush and we're gonna go just across here, look at that lovely colour. Mix it with the orange, it goes almost like a grey. You start to get a few clouds, beautiful, I love that. Look how the colours just mix seamlessly together there. Now another really good advantage of this brush is you can use it for blending, but before we do that we're going to just grab this piece of kitchen paper that's wrapped up 
in the tissue. I'm going to stamp the sun probably about here. Let's pop it just, just a little stamp just there, look. So it removes the colour. You can see the paint on that tissue. It'll only come off if it's if it's wet. Clean the brush really well, and we're just going to use kitchen paper to squeeze out, and we're going to make the brush go nice and nice and wide. If you've got this brush, if you've got a size 10 brush that you're doing this with, then you can also squeeze that. And it allows me to now just blend away. And this is one of the best things about painting skies. You can blend away, make sure the blue becomes part of the yellow. Look at that beautiful sky, a little bit of rain, leave that alone. Now, as well as that brush, I'm gonna put that one away, pick up the smaller one. It's, it's basically a sky and cloud brush small. It's the same one, just a lot smaller. This is good for doing uh, clouds on a sky. So we're gonna do that next. Make sure it's nice and clean here. Natural gray, silhouetted clouds with natural gray. We're gonna give it a bit of a wipe on the tissue. And we're going to use this brush almost horizontally. This blade makes lovely clouds. Let me show you. So we've got a good bit of colour on and we're going to sort of lay the brush. Can you see what I'm doing here? I'm using this, this bevel. Again, if you haven't got this brush, just use something like a size 6 brush. And this brush goes to a pointy 6, but then it goes to a size 8 or something like that on the side. So we're going to twist in with the blade. I'm using the blade of the brush, rotating. This is the effect I love and these brushes have made this job nice and easy. So we're going to have a few little, little clouds here, bring one coming down here, beautiful way of working, making skies an effortless thing here. This is while the paper is damp by the way, get a little one sneaking over the top of the sun, just little tiny ones here. Now look how the paint spreads. What I want to do now is clean the brush again, just like I did before. Wipe it dry, get my fingers in, make the brush go. That same, that blade edge is going to be lovely. Putting some highlights in and softening away any hard edges so you can wipe away, literally, squeeze the brush every time you do it. And you can put these lovely highlights in that you're almost using this blade and it's, it is absorbing the colour. It's also good to take the ends away from these as well. So if you've got a hard area like this, you can use that to blend it away. Again, it's all done while it's damp. Have a practice at this. The sky does work without. Notice the little sort of drag across and up. Little, little drag. Every time I'm giving the brush a little squeeze to remove any excess colour. Where this is a bit harsh here, is it's gone over the dry page where the sun is. We can soften that in in a second. But look how lovely that is. It really like illuminates the, the sky, don't it? Where this is hard here, what you want to be doing is cleaning the brush in the water and sort of rotate it around. Don't completely dry it so it's a bit damp. I can use this brush quite pointy here and literally where it overlaps the sun, give it a little bit of a, a tickle just to diffuse that line a little bit. But that is a lovely, sky really pleased with how that's gone in what I'm going to do next with this one is give this time to dry but let's just take a moment to look close at these these highlights even now look because I'm using a good quality paper and just like give it a bit of a, a soften and a bit of a blend and it just illuminates the underneath and it's a great way to to get that lovely sunset style sky. Let's let it dry and we'll come back and paint in a boat next. I've got a size six brush or a small super point um, and a very strong gray, really strong natural gray. Now natural gray, if you've not actually got natural gray, is the one color that you should have. It really makes shadows nice and easy. Such a common color. You can mix it from blue, red and yellow. You can mix it from primary colors, but a good strong <coughs> gray is what we've got here. Plenty of blue, a little bit of red, a little bit of yellow. Experiment with it, but it is important to use the right grey here. Nice and strong. Notice I'm rotating the brush and dragging it over the edge of the palette. And I've got the kitchen paper as well. That just gives more control. So just here, I'm going to paint in a little boat, okay? No sketching, straight in. Loving the sky, it's dried beautifully. And we're going to do this boat probably just here, 
to the left of the sun. And we start off by doing a figure of eight, an infinity sign, strangely. And bring this over and stay with this because you will enjoy this. It's a nice little quirky thing to do here. And we can decide, see a little rotation on the tissue to control it, which is going to be the inside, which is going to be the outside. For me, I want to say this is going to be the inside of the, the hull. It's going to be like a little bit of a rowing boat kind of thing. Pop that in there. And then what we do is we come down here, down the bow. I think I've got that right. <laughs> and then we come down here, stir. I think I've got that right. And we'll come across. We sort of connect it across here. Now the grey's strong, but that's an important thing to say. We'll fill this in, we'll block it in with a curve. Now I've left this light area. We want to clean the brush in the water. I'm going to wipe it a couple of times on the tissue. Use the damp brush, hold it like a pencil, and we're going to blend this away. We're going to wash away that internal line, the bottom of the figure of eight. We're going to come across here. We're going to move that colour. So it's good practice for blending here as well. Make sure it all nicely blends in. But when it meets, we need to make sure it's nice and light so it can stay just off the edge, just here. Clean the brush a second time if you need to on the tissue, maybe three times there, and then just drag that. So it's giving you the lightness and you're starting to see the boat forming. Look how I'm spending a bit of time refining the blend. But look how that's starting to look like a boat already. It's starting to do its job. While that's having a moment to dry, I'm just gonna pick up some more of that gray and a bit of a tap on tissue. I'm happy to use this size six brush, by the way. If you've not got a pointy size six brush, then start thinking about using rigger brushes. Because what I want to do here is pop a little sort of reflection of what we've done so far um, in the form of little horizontal lines. Notice I'm mirroring um, little horizontal drags. Tapping the paint off the brush on the kitchen paper, the paper towel really does help to give a dry speckled brush and look how you get that lovely little sort of reflective effect already. We're starting to do something. We can spend a moment here adding little bits of detail so we can pop a little bit of a some sort of rudder or something at the back. Little bits. We'll stick a roller con. <laughs> You've got to, haven't you? Just a few little bits and bobs just to make the boat more interesting. When it dries, we can spend a bit of time refining what we've got. Let's do the mast. We'll give that time to dry. We're going to do the mast. How are we going to do a simple mast? Uh, do you struggle with straight lines? If you do, here's a little tip. Some kind of a plastic card, credit card or something, store card, whatever. This is a some sort of hotel mm -hmm. key card. What I acquired on my travels. Uh, a very strong grey, very strong grey, nice and thick. Again, remove the excess. And we're going to that is going to be a perfect size for this mast. It's worth saying that the boat is probably about an inch and a half and the mast tends to be one and a half of that. So that's probably going to be about right, maybe a little bit long. So using this plastic card with a very strong grey, you can decide how much of it you want to be masked. Now for me, I'm going to say probably two thirds of it. So I want to paint in the strong grey on the edge of the card. Now this is not going to be a solid line by any means but it will give us a good starting point so you can probably see just about make out here I've painted sort of you can see with the white is I've painted sort of two-thirds of that card with this thick grey put the brush down say they want to practice and then I can see where it starts and lay that down and pop that where I feel and then I'm just going to give it a good firm press let go nice and easy then what you do is you get your brush clean it remove the excess water and just refine so i want to wash that bit in there because that obviously wants to be part of the wants to be internally um we can quite often you'd add a little bit extra to the top a thinner bit maybe um you can tweak you'll often see a boat like this with a double mast so we'll have a shorter one at the back 
which I'm using the short side of the cord. So you can, it, it's quite an addictive thing to do this, so it's good to do it twice. Put that one probably about there. Nice, I love it. Really nice little quick trick. Again, clean your brush on the tissue, and then any bits that are overlapping, any holes, just use a bit of water to wash it in, and just refine should you need to. Make sure things are nice and dark. While we've got this dark colour on the brush, by the way, I'm just going to add a little bit of shadow to the front here and start to do the impression of some little lines in the boat. We can also reflect, of course, the mast. So line it up and then where you think it should start, just give a little bit of a a wobble. I remember that we are doing this in the form of a horizontal and I'm also going to do a little bit of a rolled up sail here which I'm just going to bring across like that which we could also reflect. That would be about here wouldn't it? So it's a little always make your reflection up from horizontal lines you know Makes perfect sense. Changing the brush now for something very pointy. Here we've got a rigger brush, or in this particular case, it's a Matthew Palmer branching detail brush. Uh, a lovely brush for getting detail, some kind of a detail brush, good strong bit of colour. Wipe away that excess on the edge. So you've got a lovely pointy brush there to work with. I'm going to have this boat moored up with a little bit of a, a rope coming down. A few little dangly bits, there's always a few little bits dangling from the rope. And then, of course, we'll reflect it as well. Like so. Which, which also really helps. It gives that sort of sense of, you know, that sort of lovely, sort of lonely, calming sort of vibe to this picture. A few little bits of detail now, rigging. Um, the reason a rigger brush is a rigger brush is because it was designed for doing rigging on boats. It's as simple as that. A few little extra little lines just coming around the boat there, just give it a bit of clarity. See how it gives a bit of shape to it. Um, but rigging, yes. Um, my advice to you is don't paint the whole rigging. Just do a, a pointy brush, remove the excess, have a trial run in your mind. And then when you're ready, lay your brush on and do a flick away. Let it disappear. Your mind fills in the gaps. That's the best way of doing rigging. Don't go for the whole thing down towards the front there. See what I mean? And as many of these as you feel it needs. But it always looks nice when rigging goes on. But literally, your mind fills in those gaps. It really does. little spots at the top from here got a few going up disappear into nothing as it were one going towards the back there get on the tissue and that one down Probably down there as well that's, that's probably enough on the rigging but a very effective boat now just to finish things off here you can see that the paint is still wet, it's still a bit shiny, so I want to give this a little bit of time to dry. Just want to add a couple more little lines for reflections here. And um, what we'll also do is get some silhouettes of some seagulls up here. Just to give a bit of extra. Notice the little gap between them, between the wings. But let's give that a dry and we'll come back to it shortly and then we'll put some finishing touches on. Nice and dry. Just um, using a little square brush. This one is a Matthew Palmer large lift out brush, but a small, this one's kind of quarter inch, six mil. Dry piece of kitchen paper, that's the one that's got the coin wrapped in. And uh, 
just a little bit of water on your brush and what you can do is you can add a little bit of detail to this in the form of lift out so the brush is damp we'll start off by adding a little piece that just comes down the front here tap it firmly reflect that as well so it's given me the sort of bow of the boat where the mast goes into the the hull get that overlapping pop some light in you could lighten the side more so where the sun's catching of course these are optional things that just in my opinion just go that extra little mile just to give it a little bit more detail it really depends on you because it was okay as it was but if you want to go further with it you you've got chance here where this hull swings over here the top edge of it we can just lighten that a little bit there press it firmly you can add a few lighter ridges in the in the actual side there beautiful and it just adds a little bit extra don't it even down here as well a little bit of detail inside the boat potentially a little bit of a horizontal line inside will give that very weak impression of a seat you can go as far as you like with this now you can also try and it depends how much color you've got around with a brush like this to add some highlights as a reflection of the sun but it, it really depends how much colors around there's not a huge amount on here but there's enough to get a little to get a little impression of a just as though the sun's catching it and of course on the same waves as doing that you can just use horizontal lines to give more of a surface more of an edge to the water again your mind fills in the gaps here so this is a lift out brush it's a, just a nice quality um, square brush my search for a good quality square brush used to be a challenge really so having one that does the job without any effort is quite a nice thing to do just needs a bit of water to make it work though um, possibly a few horizontals coming through here as well I'm going to pop that brush away and then we've still got this uh, really fine branching detail brush or rigger brush which has got a little bit of darkness on quite strong with the grey there and what we're going to do here is just it's always important I would say that um, when it comes to adding detail that you wipe away that excess on the side of the palette because or even on the kitchen paper because and then hold this thing like a pen get really close into it and it allows it just to go in and just say I'm just going to add a little bit of extra detail here some some sort of lines that just swing around the wood maybe come down here a little bit little tiny fiddly tweaks that aren't going to cause any problems to anybody and we'll pop some little bits of wooden blocks on these these ropes here to give it a bit more detail if you if you've been into boating you know there's all sorts of things ropes and things I was brought up on sort of old sailing boats my dad was very much into all of that and um, had a nice childhood on boats nice Now, if we give that one final dry, there's just one little trick we can do to give a bit extra using a very sharp craft knife, being very careful, of course. So a nice sharp knife, and this one's optional, but if you want to just add a little bit of extra sparkle and scrape off the paint, then you'll find that a knife works better in one direction than the other. So sometimes with a knife, I tend to turn it over and put the blade that way have a little test but what you're doing is you're scratching off basically colour and it just puts a little horizontal 
highlight around blow the dust away and um, obviously being careful when using the knives but it's just, just a good way to add a little bit of a sparkle especially where that sun reflects and there you go just puts a little sort of bit of reflection there a little bit of sparkle and that's made a beautiful little miniature sunset scene with a lovely boat there remember the knife is also good you could actually scrape off a little bit of extra colour down the edge of the the mast even on the rolled up sail just give a little bit of light into there a few little creases and things but you could scratch off some highlights in the boat itself make it more catch the sun but all in all i love the little effect hope you enjoyed that folks and i will see you very very soon take care